Do you know stability of buildings is affected by lateral loads such as wind and seismic loads? In this tutorial, you will learn how to work out wind loading on buildings. This is part 25 of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please have a look at link down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. Lateral stability of steel buildings is divided into these four YouTube tutorials and I have already covered part 23 and part 24 which gives you theoretical background of braced framing and moment frames and shear walls. In part 25 which is the topic of discussion for my today's tutorial is about wind loading calculations. In this part I will calculate wind loading on a steel frame building and then that loading will be transferred to steel bracing and how do we work out loading on steel bracing and how do we design them for wind loading. Now how do we work out wind loading? Now previously I told you that we can estimate wind load pressure as 120 newton per meter square if we're not given any design calculations. So consider 20 meter wide, 29 meter long and 27 meter high building and that is located in Sheffield. Sheffield is in north of England. Assume 100 kilometer from the coast, 2 kilometer into the town, 105 meter above sea level. The same wind calculations are to be done for wind blowing from various directions because the building is symmetric so that's why we will do the same calculations. When the building is not symmetric, then the calculations have to be revised. Height of the building is given, which is 27. Site altitude is given, which is 105. And distance to the shoreline is given, which is 100. And distance to the town is given, which is 2. Breadth of the building is 20. Damping coefficient, we assume 0 0.08 for the buildings. H over B, we can work it out. And depth of the building is 29. So these things are given. But the other things we have to find out and ultimately our aim is to reach over here to find out overall wind force. Now first map wind speed. Now if you have a look over here, this is 23. This contour is 23. This contour is 22. So it is slightly above 22. So that's why it's 22.1. You just have to have a look at the contours. Then you can work it out. So Sheffield is here. This is map of some part of the UK. And then you work out C altitude, which is altitude factor. The formula for altitude factor is 1 plus 0 0.01 A into H. H, our height of the building is 27. And A is the site altitude, which is given as well, 105. This is the formula. So if you put all these values, you will get C altitude as 1.1. So we enter it back in here. The next thing we want to work out is directional factor. A directional factor depends on the direction of wind blowing. Although, I mean, there are various directions, but the worst case scenario is to take one. So that's why we will take it as one. And then next thing is the displacement height. It, it depends on the depth of your building with respect to other buildings. You have different formula for that, but it's safest to take hash distance as zero. And then you have this Z value, which you can work it out from here. So Z minus H, H distance is 27 because H distance was zero. So corresponding to this 27, you can see that distance from the shoreline and your distance from the shoreline is, I think, 100 or something. Then your factor, C altitude factor, will be equal to 2.98. So wherever it's touching the curve, so it's touching at some point which is between 2.9 and 3. So that's why we take it as 2.98. And then we want to find out zone factor. So distance to the town is given. Z minus H is, is we worked it out. Now correction factor, C, E, T and the zone for size factor is C. So Z minus H, so corresponding to this 27 and corresponding to this distance from the town, which is two, so two comes out to be here. And then we draw it, we get this C E T factor as 0 0.98. Then we get this Q P, the formula is 0.613, V map into C altitude into C D R plus C into C E T. V map is here. 22 so we replace 22 here 
and c alt is somewhere here 1.1 c alt is 1.1 and c dir is directional factor which is one so times one here times c e is exposure factor which is 2.98 and c e d is a correction factor which is 0.98 so if you put all these values you get this qp orography most buildings they have non-significant orography so don't worry about it the breadth of the building and height of the building is we sum it up it's 47 and then h minus distance was equal to i think 27 or something so b plus h is in this zone nearly about 50 and h minus distance was 27 so it will fall into this category the value will come out to be 0.85 so size factor cs is 0.85 and again damping is 8 percent for mixed rc plus steel so you have h over b height of the building divided by breadth is 1.35 and 1.35 means it will come over here height of the building is 27 which is equal to probably 30 your value is going to be in between these two values so by interpolation you work out value as 1.03 and cd is usually one for buildings not more than 20 meter high now qp into cs into cd it will give you a pressure from previous calculation we found out this one and cs is the side factor and cd is the dynamic factor so our value comes out to be 0.926 kpa that is the peak force but again we have to multiply with some kind of other factors so depth of the building is 29 h over d is 0.93 the force coefficient is cf is found out from here which is 0.92 you can use this formula as well to find out the cf but this is exponential functions it comes out to be 0.92 now, once we have it, then our overall force will be equal to QP, CS, CD. This we found out a little earlier, which was 0.926 kPa. CT is a factor which we found out earlier. Sorry, this is not CT, this is CF. Okay, so make this correction. This is CF. The CF we found out earlier, which was 0.92. And AH is the area of the building. So when you multiply with the area, of the building okay not not the plan area so when you multiply all this you get a load of 460 kilonewton so which is not very far off if we would have assumed a peak pressure as one kilonewton per meter which would have resulted in 540 so which would be on higher side and this can be from both directions so that it can be written as 4, 460 now wind is a live load and has a load factor of 1.5 for ULS design that's the reason we multiply it with 1.5. And equivalent horizontal forces at each level are to be added to wind loads as well. So these are usually 0.5% of the gravity loads or 1 over 200 of gravity loads. The total wind force now we know, 460. Now assume all floors have 3 meter high except the ground floor which is 6 meter. So we're assuming that all floors are 3 meter high except ground floors. So we have 7 floors above and then the bottom floor we're assuming it's six so seven times three is 21 21 plus six is 27 so this will give us overall height of the building now the force is split per bracing system that is proportional to the stiffness of the building and per flow okay that is proportional to the height of the building now how did we work out this force uh, these loads please have a look at the i mean earlier slides that we used and see how did we come up with these forces so 460 so if i add it up i will get 460 and assume that there are two brace pairs to resist wind load then we will divide this loading by two so this will give us 230 so now we will divide all the forces that we worked out here by half so that on each brace we will have half of the flow now again i'm following the same procedure for each brace pair all wind is resisted at its base from this and geometry, the worst force in brace can be found out by vertical component in the column. So in the same way, again, vertical component will be equal to 230, that is the horizontal component, times 6 times vertical divided by, assume the width of the building is 7, so 6 over 7. So this will give you the vertical component in the column. Now this needs to be added to the vertical load due to gravity in design of column. 
And then resultant force in the brace is going to be summation of vertical plus horizontal load. And this will give me resultant force in the brace as 303 kilo newton. Now, once I've got this loading, then I can design this bracing as a tension member. And then you know how to design a tension member.